Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Huge announcement this week in that we got Addison Ray released. Many of you have likely already seen my Guild Wars showcase yesterday where I did 140 here on the first day just to get ahead of the curve and see some of the results because I did believe pretty strongly in my conclusion about her. Hopefully this character review does the same for you as well. So you're in for some luck. I've made some changes to my character reviews and this was something I was thinking about anyway, but talk about good timing. What better time to implement them than now for Addison Ray's release? Now, there's a couple small tweaks here. Number one, I built out the character overview section just a little bit, and I've also kind of revamped my report card section as well, where I've added some metrics, took away a couple. I'll talk about why I made those changes when I get there. I've also bumped up my general thoughts here to keep it more closely confined with that report card. And we're still going to go through the passives, counters, and job abilities, and the auto priority of abilities for those that want to see more justification for my thoughts. We'll look at the TMR, the job-based vision cards, the S synergies, and the weapon optimization. So overall, pretty much the same thing, but just kind of shuffling around things that make a little more sense and hopefully enhancing them to give some better context to how I talk about these things. Now, for the character overview, brand new light unit they've added to the game. Another free light unit, technically, which has obviously been a bunch. They've given her the unique job of performer with the blade soul and red mage sub jobs. She does equip gloves, which again, many of those units popping up more and more. A hat cloth and accessory is the other equips with a move of three, jump of one as another 100 cost unit but definitely worthy of the cost the faith stat you are going to keep at 97 she's a magic damage dealer so definitely keep that in mind now for the main job only not including the sub jobs the max range of her attacks is five squares away she does have one aoe on the main job and three single target attacks on the main job so definitely skews a little more toward single target attacks her limit break is technically aoe as well when we look at the resistances weapon resistances here this is actually pretty balanced a lot of strong double digit once 30 percent to slash some of that coming from her dream ability 15 percent to missile 15 percent to magic but they've also gone on the other side of the spectrum here going minus 10 percent to both pierce and strike i'll be honest i can't remember the last time i saw a character release with two negative weapon resistances so they've done a pretty good job balancing both of those i think now being a 97 faith unit you do want to be cognizant of what you can be afflicted by for status elements 50 percent to slow and paralysis those are probably middle of the road ones in terms of overall like deadly lethal impact but there's certainly ones that are good to hedge against 10 percent to poison is fine you just don't see it come around as often and we look at the mastery abilities here she got the standard 10 percent hp and 15 light attack they gave her an additional 10 percent hp though to kind of bulk her up a little bit with a decreased chance of being targeted of five which obviously very good for some of these units in terms of the hate priority order and where they get attacked that'll allow her to essentially give her teammate two or three extra turns to get attacked before she does depending upon a whole bunch of the factors but the dream ability magic attack of 15 which is a nice little offensive buff and will make her prioritize her main job compared to the slash type on the blade soul sub job that we'll see soon and obviously the skill upgrade now, when we look at the base and total stats, now base stats starting off here, a lot higher than I would have expected from an HP perspective. I just kind of assumed being a dancer and more of like a, I guess, support oriented role. No, she's not a support. She's a DPS by all metrics, but definitely higher than I expected from an HP perspective. I think that's a great starting spot overall. From a magic perspective, base magic, she is the new highest magic unit in the game. Now it's only by three points, 20 points here or there for base magic doesn't really change a whole lot, but certainly nice to give her that little crown if you will that she's our new base magic leader in the game at 423 from an agility perspective definitely on the lower side here 54 base agility but that's not the end of the story there's a lot more to still go into that but overall uh agility base agility doesn't necessarily mean as much as some of these if only because that stat is overall lower so when it comes to the percentage gains it's not as drastically affected as some of these others i don't know if i said that right but whatever we'll move on uh base dexterity a little bit above average here which is good because there are some crit mechanics in her kit that you do want to emphasize a little bit and so that's certainly a good thing and then definitely above average here from a luck perspective which is a theme for many light units certainly helps her as well it doesn't do a whole ton for her evasion and accuracy as you'll see but having a high base luck is obviously a great thing overall just when you talk about those metrics and the crit avoidance as well and when you take those five charts kind of sum them up into these one to look at the relative strengths again no real glaring weaknesses other than that lower agility and when you include the total stats they obviously make up for it here when you look at the source of those stats they give her 13 agility points which is far above the average for what they give units so they definitely compensate for that they jip her a little bit on the dexterity to bring her back down to earth from total dexterity but still a high base dexterity is worth more than the board stats and the same thing can be said for magic where although she did take kind of a step down it's only because a couple magic units do get some magic stat from their mastery and dream ability which bumps them up which she did not but again high space magic it's not going to matter at the end of the day 
Now we look at the agility stats overall. Now without passives, she's basically about average, but one of the passives you'll on, have on a majority of the time is an agility passive. You'll see why soon, which does put her into this next tier of agility, which is quite strong in my opinion. I think it's a really strong starting spot for total agility here. Now we look at the crit hit and crit avoid. Again, this unfortunately does include a passive here for that crit hit rate. I normally omit it, but because it's a passive, you likely have on 100% of the time. I don't want to underestimate or under display what her true crit rate is it's basically about average but the bottom line is that that is a good starting spot to still grow your crit rate off of so uh, end of the day that's still very salvageable and from a crit avoidance rate innately basically average neither here nor there but still good to have some visibility toward now for the accuracy not an accurate unit when you're not equipping passive she's basically average and when you do put her on that gradient of comparing her to characters with their accuracy passives equipped definitely a step down here now that's not the end of the story she does have a guaranteed hit as we'll see but overall not known for her accuracy when we look at the evasion she's right here on the bottom edge of the gradient because the luck stat to make her an evade unit i don't consider her an evade unit if you're min maxing your team for it she's probably going to benefit a little bit but really bottom end of it i wouldn't have any high expectations for that now we look at the report card i'm going to talk very briefly about some of the changes i've implemented and then i'm going to go through the grades obviously now effective hp i used to have three of them here i had effective hp effective physical hp and then effective magical hp i've basically combined them into one they're all relatively the same or at least close enough current age of the game and instead i've added a second metric here to talk about survivability which is kind of the effective hp but a step further because now we're seeing more than ever the effective hp is just like kind of one aspect of their overall survivability and i always talk about it but now i want to give it a formal grade so we'll do that i've also changed the primary stat to damage now again tanks and supports aren't really known for the damage so they'll skew lower on this grade but i talk so often in these presentations now about penetration modifiers and whatnot that primary stat is only one aspect of it i want to talk more comprehensively about damage agility accuracy evasion and movement all still the same and the two new ones i've added here are auto ease of use i think this is a really important one when it to talk about characters getting the most benefit for the widest array of players there are certain characters that are very strong because they're very straightforward and very good at what they do snow is notoriously one of the best at this where he's basically just got two buffs that he uses very consistently movement is pretty straightforward one main attack that's really handy and straightforward and that's it you get super good results for very easy uh, you know use overall and then i look at a character last week like vega where all of a sudden you look at their ease of use from an auto perspective and you're like well there's two different buffs it depends on the space here and depends on the penetrations you gotta do this vision card this passive min max this way all of a sudden the character is a lot more complex a lot more variables to screw up so you may not get that you know final grade that i recommend if you can't get their auto tuning right so i think that's worth considering and then game disruption is more of a very short-term look at things where yes i try to give these grades in the broad scheme of the game but i do want to start kind of quantify what i think their short-term impact is on the game and just whether they do anything to really disrupt it and that's usually noteworthy because people that are good disruptors typically drive metas forward or make the game change and now then passives counter overall job and kit and final grade are the same so basically the same grading spectrum but i think this is a little more comprehensive now from an effective hp perspective going with a b minus here similar effective hp to lucio and hyo now hyo feels way tankier because the amount of aoe resistance he has but strictly speaking from a health pool perspective and like a resistance perspective she's right in that ballpark it's actually better than i would have thought she does have defense and spirit on her passives but you're unlikely to use those but she does have four spirit innately so she's slightly more bulky than most of your characters just from a damage reduction hp perspective now survivability going with a b here protect and 50 percent physical barrier to self i'm waiting to protect here a little heavier than the physical barrier because there are more frequently ways that you can break now she is technically courage capable because of one of her main buffs but not recommended that you use it on herself that's typically not a good thing so although it's there i'm not weighting it very heavily into the survivability grade because i don't think that's how you should be using her she does technically have a physical and magic on the same ability reflex counter and again although that's very strong the amount of reaction block rate in the game it's only 15 percent really good but not broken and the minus five chance to be targeted is a very big thing though for overall survivability so sticking with a b here 
Now for damage, I'm going with an A. Again, very strong magic stat. 80 spear penetration from the passives. 40 magic res pen from the passives. She does also have a 24% magic passive that's part of that, so that's going to get even higher. She has access to both magic and slash types. They're all insta-cast, and she does have a magic barrier break in the main job. So there's not a lot of ways to mitigate what she wants to do. Not mentioned here, she also has a 30 spirit imperil on a single target and a 30 AoE resistance imperil to a group of enemies. So again, very strong strong potential for damage here agility i'm going with a b here average innate agility but she will use that agility passive extensively so it bumps her up to that next tier in the b range accuracy going with a d you know strictly average without passives and below average when you consider passives she does have access to that one 100 hit chance though so certainly nice to still use it in a pinch as we saw from my guild war results yesterday it works when necessary so overall there's some salvageable glass half full you know takes on that but overall not an accurate unit evasion going with a c minus she will benefit from the luck in the evasion but not a strength or really reliable i wouldn't consider her an evade unit only someone who tangentially might benefit from it in an evade team the movement i'm going with a d here now i'm kind of changing the way i give this grade someone had recommended to me quite a while ago and it's a great recommendation that characters that have move of three jump of one with no way to change it aren't actually average they're actually below average because many Many characters have opportunities to amend their movement and so i yeah going with a d here she's got no ways to alter her move of jump totally fine got to be knowledgeable about it the auto ease of use i'm going with an a here now the best thing about her main buff here is because it puts a barrier on her the ai that when you have a barrier equipped you will not reuse a buff and reapply barriers the ai just doesn't work like that so very straightforward and that she'll move once to a teammate buff and you don't have to worry about her running around in circles applying that buff again the second priority is that teammate buff that'll give them courage and a heal back that we'll talk about more extensively that one's pretty straightforward then the tmr overall the options are pretty impactful the ease of use again you have those imperils on basically everything you have a guaranteed hit it's really straightforward for how she does damage and it works well so i'm going with an a here for auto ease of use and the game disruption i'm also going with an a here that courage and self feel that she can grant to a teammate that we'll talk about more is a massive buff to many characters not only to someone like a tank where you can give any tank courage you give any tank a 50 percent heal back to their health pool but even characters that are let's say evade units where there's that nullify sure hit on it so you can give an evade character not only nullify sure hit but you can give them courage and heal back as well very very strong for any character and when you talk about from a rainbow perspective since she's a light unit she won't get hard countered by elements other than dark uh, obviously being a light unit as well great buff to the light cast for what she adds and being a glove unit has many uh, rainbow team opportunities as well so there's a lot of applications you can put her in now passives going with an a exceptional two main passives this really should be an a plus quite honestly the rest are really good but they're just hard to flex and you're going to see why the counter ability going with an a for that general reflex the overall job and kit going with an a again great buffs an exceptional amount of utility strong damage and good sub jobs to complement what she does for a final grade of an a plus very few weaknesses very strong supportive abilities with what she does for the teammates and the enemies definite counterplay though i don't think she's oppressive or op i think we're just gonna have to you know change up the meta at the moment to counter what she does but i don't think it's undefeatable but i do think she has a strong upside for a lot of impact here at that a plus grade now for the general thoughts overall you know great magic damage potential we talked about that magic stat with the 24 percent passive 80 spirit pen innately 40 magic res pen innately an aoe 30 percent in peril as well we're talking about the utility it's that aoe 30 percent in peril again as part of that protect to a teammate the courage and the shirt nullify and the hp restore she has a 30 percent spirit in peril on single target as well she can also dispel courage herself we didn't even talk about that yet she has the ability to dispel courage on an enemy slow on her limit break and dispel spell on the spell blade sub upon critical hit so she does have access to a dispel probably not going to be used a lot though but again tons of utility here relatively straightforward ai a good two use tmr is highly recommended though again you don't want her using that courage teammate buff uh, twice in a fight or not on herself it, it's fine if she does you're probably gonna win if she does but ideally you want to save that for a second fight you know i do think she synergizes well with the vision cards available for both light and gloves uh, she's basically an insta buff for near all units whether it's a tank or even an own uh, support on her team or damage dealer really everyone benefits when she's in the party very unit attack oriented which you saw but that can be a good thing again a lot of aoe resistance in the game and although she can imperil it having those strong single target attacks actually 
allow her to do a lot of damage. A great buff to classic light evasion as well. Now, really and truly, she's a great addition to any evade units. Any evade unit is going to want nullify sure hit and courage and a heal back. But for light in particular, since they're so strongly built around that concept, this is an excellent buff to what she brings for Elena and Locke and Violet and characters like that, where they've basically been kind of hard countered here in the short term, and she gives them an option to really fight back. Now, the crit rate angle is very interesting. We'll talk more about this, but the Elena vision card, again, talking about the light synergy, is crit damage up. She has a blade soul passive ability that bumps up that crit rate. Her dexterity, base dexterity is very high. The blade soul sword song buff is another buff to crit rate, and her TMR also gives a buff to crit rate. So very interesting angle here where you talk about potential damage. The TMR we're going to talk about soon is exceptionally good from the meta disruption perspective that it dispels haste. So you talk about the wrath TMR, the old sorrow TMR, Velis, Lemray, the ability to dispel haste to any teammate in addition to the crit rate buff it gives, very, very strong. Starting at a 50% AP is nice, but she does require some AP management input. Again, a lot of expensive abilities here. You don't want her uptime to suffer. So something to keep in mind is a weak Weakness. The lack of innate AoE or unit resistance is also kind of a weakness and a little concerning, but she should be semi backline just based on her overall movement as well. And the minus 5% chance of being targeted certainly helps as well. So I'm not terribly concerned like I am with some other characters for that weakness. The data mine that we see so far does imply there's two additional equipment items for her, though. A phone and a glove so don't know about what those are at this time but i want to give that as a mention for something to look out for in the future now for the passive abilities the two that i really think are the best 99 percent of the time cosmetic magi and blade soul lore and you're talking about 24 percent magic that's where she gets the 40 spirit the 40 magic res pen she gets another 40 spirit pen from the blade soul lore 12 percent agility and 12 crit rate there's so much stack between those two, I can't imagine doing anything else. Now, I do think there's an honorable mention that should you want to take off Blade Soul lore and do Red Mage lore for that 10% extra magic damage, I do think there's something to be said there that if you think 80 Spirit Pen is overkill and you don't mind sacrificing some agility, good second option. The rest of these, they're honestly really good, just not good enough. You're looking at three different other passives that increase her defense spirit hp magic res some combination of all of them i just don't think it's enough bulk to make up for what you're losing on some of the offensive potency but either way still an a plus for all the options you have now the counter abilities this is that general reflex again only 15 percent chance to proc but still this does work very handily sometimes so love that they have this the main job buffs being able to take a closer look at these now so again the main priority buff is barrier bop that's a 50 percent physical barrier for her it's also protect for herself and allies for three turns as well this will be first priority it will not be recast unless that barrier is broken the second one here is soul regram where there's that courage to an ally it's a distance of three squares away so she will move toward them so again she has a lot of horizontal movement here which is why i think she'll stay you know relatively far farther behind will also recover 50 percent of their health when they fall below 20 percent and will ignore sure hit for three turns now again i've mentioned this many times if she runs out of buffs and there aren't enemies in range she will recast this on either herself or another teammate so just be careful about how many buffs you have in terms of availability now for the main job offensive i'm really going to focus here on sorceress shuffle first that's that 165 percent mod and we're looking at the range height and distances this is five squares away it's a 30 percent aoe in peril and when you are imperiling them it's also a 40 percent attack and magic break so great for mitigating some extra damage coming in go viral is probably the second best one here where again and we're looking at ap values too that aoe 40 ap this next one is 32 ap it's a hundred percent hit chance though 200 mod also breaks magic barriers so very little you can do to you know get away from that and these last two still exceptionally good it's a double hit here from rhythmic fake of the 30 spirit in peril and chill out is again very short range but it's chance to dispel courage for targets so still very strong latent fights when you're worried about something having courage overall stacked main job but you'll notice most of these the range is a little more limited to like four at maximum five so a little bit shorter range but that's not the end of the world we look at the limit break and other things and i consider this part of the main job because it's always on this limit break 69 ap and very expensive triple hit though still another range of five in that diamond shape aoe 200% mod 
squad and 67% chance to inflict slow. So what's likely to happen is that as she walks up to enemies, she'll start off with Sorceress Shuffle because that'll do the most damage in giving that AoE in peril. And then she'll likely follow up with a limit break to really capitalize on that AoE damage. So I, I'm pretty sure that's the order of how it occurs. And then the honorable mention here is her vision card ability they've given her. This is main slot or sub slot. She has access to this. It's a reduced counter chance of 100% for three turns to the enemy at a 240% modifier. But again, 42 AP. Very expensive. The one very cool thing about this, though, is that it is a range height of two. So although this is the same range four squares away and it's another unit type attack, this has some extra height flexibility that the other single target attacks don't, where their height range, as we go back here, is only a range a height of one. So certainly a nice thing to throw in there. Now for the sub job, the performer, this is interesting. I like it. I don't know if I love it. Fascinating Twirl is basically an AoE chance to disable. This is kind of her defense against high evade units where she will use this. I'm a little confused why it's an evade rate decrease of 50 though if targets are disabled their evasion goes to zero anyway so i don't really see the point of this but it's also a spirit in peril of 40 percent as well so you're talking about disabling some evade units and then following up with uh, that spirit in peril they're basically dead and take it slow although looks decent you know ct down of 200 it's a range of you know two squares away way too close range and 24 ap is not cheap enough in my opinion to justify that so the blade soul sub i do like again in my replay yesterday i showed the sword song formation i like the crit rate in the slash attack where most light units are slash attack slate wiper is kind of an honorable mention but if you're talking about that auto priority again she's going to be using her main job aoe in peril first then the limit break then this if anything it's nice that she has access to another type of aoe ability on this but again lower mod it's slash type attack she's got no slash res pen and it really only gets value if you're crit hitting so honorable mention but not amazing i think the best sub job here and i'm going to play more with this is the red mage i do like jamming thrust from the range perspective that this is much further than what she hits up to but i would be worried that someone might move in range before she can use her courage ability on the teammate so just be cognizant that you don't get baited by the range of this but when you do again 200 percent mod cancels ability activation increased spirit of 20 for three turns and i love the cura access on here that talk about a second fight follow-up the ability to cure a teammate is exceptionally important so i love this i think it's probably my favorite now for the team r review again i talked about this i love this team r it checks every box that i want number one it's an accessory number two bunch of different stats on it number three it's a double use number four the shape of the aoe it's this nice forgiving diamond i love to see that because it's so flexible for movement and it's dispel haste for three turns for herself and allies on any attack that you hit an enemy with and it's increased crit rate of 30 as well so hopefully some dps output that you can more consistently hit those crits overall very very strong accessory to use in that tmr slot from the job based vision cards who even wants to read this at this point there's so many it's actually a great thing and talking very high level about them just you know these two on the left that are in this box are really more offensive oriented they're okay but probably not recommended just because it's harder to fit those into a total team because you really do want to prioritize the second two here that have that aoe res and the agility of 15 percent that's really the foundation of a good team here but great that they have access to it when you talk about her card in particular i think it's a great sub job card where if you do silver memories in the main slot this one of the sub slot you still get two different kinds of magic percent stacking together the reaction block rate innately for her to be able to leverage and we do in the future have in jp a human killer on magic attack as well so you have three potential offensive oriented glove damage vision cards there's a lot here to like for flexibility purposes now we talk about the s percentages again really straightforward this is almost kind of repetitive at this point you know i would focus mainly light attack human killer and magic attack she has blade soul abilities but she's really magic attack oriented you can go with those three i think the you know velfor dark armu and bahamut are probably the best dark armu is probably a little more in the moment just because of what it has for slash res but i love valfor for that dark res bahamut's the best offensively magic esper as well i do think uh, odin actually is a very good honorable mention here i know he's not a magic esper but again you talk about the stats on that esper in terms of agility the board for the human killer the accuracy the slash res the missile res it's awesome everything about it you like it's neutral so it doesn't take extra damage from any elements for accuracy though i really love those three i always talk about these three typhon i love for that magic percent given her base magic and shiva and ramu are particularly special because if you recall her two weaknesses 10 percent to pierce 
10% to strike. They both respectively have resistances to both of those attack types. So you're far worried about those negatives. These are excellent and that they solve an agility problem, a resistance problem, and an accuracy problem. So very good options. And finally, Carbuncle actually is another good honorable mention here. We're again a little bit slower, but doesn't have that dark resistance. There's light attack, there's magic attack, a lot of good things. Now for the weapon optimization, this is going to change because again, she has one coming out. We're not sure what it is. If I had to guess, there's probably some AoE resistance on it because she has got none in the kit. But just for now, you know, Kefka's gloves and the Elven gloves are basically the same that their spirit pen of 20 i honestly don't think she needs this because she's got the 80 innately i think this is kind of overkill you'll get up to 90 with a trust no passive anyway just comparing the two though i think kefka's are probably just slightly superior but really not by much the cobalt gloves are different in that they're the magic res pen of 20 and that's fine gets her up to 60 total but i think 50 is fine with the trust no passive i think this is a little bit overkill and i think the best one in the meantime really is the dark gloves now these are straight up superior to roy's pyrotex gloves but again you talk about 214 magic stat you still get the magic attack 15 uh, on my fight yesterday with king mon i hit damage cap and so it's possible so adding max damage of a thousand actually is like a potentially really good thing here for her too i think these gloves are best until we see what they come out with for additional things but that's the addison ray character review in a nutshell again there's a lot to really like here there's a lot of implications for usage absolutely great unit for theory crafters i'm sure she's gonna be a great manual unit as well you know just being able to time when you want to give that courage to a teammate or when you want to potentially have that healing perspective or really capitalize on that chain where you see she's got a double hit and a triple hit Overall, really solid character. Gumi did an exceptionally good job designing her. And I'm excited to see what we as a community can do to put her to use. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon. Uh -huh.